Mountain's Haunt. <laughs> okay, so let's say you made like a special node or scene and you want to add it to your game. So with a tile set, I'm working in 2D right here, there's two ways to do this. You gotta just simply add it or you could uh, like this, you know, just instance a child scene and go down to this scene. I'm just gonna use a barrel right here and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna show this shit. So right here, I'm gonna transform it. Let's see, 100, just so I can see it. Bam. Right here, I'm gonna move this right here. So you see it already has some collision. It, it's already ready to go, basically. So first, I'm just gonna show you how it works, and I'll show you the code afterwards. This right here, yeah. So the barrel has health and it's functioning, and yeah, just like run the game, you get to see how it works. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, you can already see it. Once you shoot it, it's already gone. Okay. So I'll go through the code right here. So basically, I have made like a hitbox. I couldn't figure out another way to do it. I just like, I, I just kind of like bullshit this together real quick. Just so I get something working. I'll probably find out a different way to do it later. You know, look up some documentation. So a signal, like once the shotgun hits something, then the signal is sent and this listens for it. So it's always listening for it and uh, if it if the shotgun hits them and this will be uh, this function will be called and then if it's uh, if the bullet hits within this range then the barrel will be damaged so yeah basically just got a health system going on with some signal working yeah some simple shit but uh, I wanted to add this to the thing so like it's already right here but yeah but there are actually better ways to do this rather than um, having to you know like statically add it to the graphical interface because after a while this could become messy let's say if I want to make like a bunch of duplicates or something I think control D is a duplicate Bam. so let's say if I want to make a bunch of barrels you know start moving them around you know what I mean this is this takes a while for one and also it makes this whole graphical interface look like a mess so I'm gonna get rid of all these Wait, uh, yeah so there's a better way to do this, in my opinion. It's more of an opinionated thing, but yeah. But it keeps you from having to having a mess in your graphical interface. What you could do is you could just use a tile set. Well, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta make a tile set, and right here I have the barrels contained. So uh, the only problem with tiles is they don't have any code attached to them. The only thing is they might have a collision thing, you know, right here. So if I add a tile, boom, all it had, all that one thing has right there. Is just if the player runs into it it'll get stopped like these walls it doesn't have any more functionality than a wall which is why I named that walls but yeah so look I run to this wall right here can't go through it run to this I uh, see I can't go through that run to that can't go through that but uh, all the ones in these game in this game actually have code attached even though I don't actually have anything going on right here so let's see okay so I have these tiles they have their own IDs and they have their own map coordinates. So these will all come in handy for later. This is, these are the things you're going to use basically to put your own actual, actual like entities in there. Like barrels or enemies or something. Which I have like a meaty setup. I have a barrel setup. Yeah. But first I'll go over barrels. So the first thing you do is you have to load. Use this preload function. Find. You see right here, there's like a whole like path. That's a resources uh, path, and then like you look for a barrel, bam, right there, barrel, barrel.tc, and bam, you load it in. In inside quotations, put that into the preload function, and give the return of that function to the variable barrel, which is a constant. So we won't be able to change it later, in case you're new to coding. But yeah, so basically the barrel is going to be its own thing. And uh, we're just gonna load up basically um, not an instance, but just uh, we're just loading that path into here, basically, and grabbing that scene. So what's gonna happen? Okay, so the main uh, meat of this whole like process is inside the ready function, because it's gonna happen right when the game starts up. So uh, yeah. So what's cool is remember I was talking about the IDs earlier. So this is where you use them. So you use this function called get use cells by ID. And you look for any of them that have this um that have this tile. 
So any uh, tile that's used up by this, um, I don't know what you call it, like maybe object or something, and any tile that's used up by this object is going to be replaced, like that. So that's a barrel of ID 5, which is at the end. So you can see the uh, ending ID right here, where test tiles dot t res colon colon three and then space five. The the five at the end tells you the ID. So this is the ID of six for this broken barrel. This is the ID of eight for this enemy, and this is the ID of three for this wall, which I don't need to replace because it doesn't need any additional functionality. Okay. So inside the uh, script, we're going back to it. So this is a get used sales by ID function, and what it does is it gets the location of every single barrel, which has an ID of 5, and it puts it into an array. So the map coordinates are different from normal coordinates. See, look, you have like a 12 and 18. Right here, right here you have a negative 1 and 18, 2 and negative 17, negative 12 and negative 18, and yeah, you have all those. So, yeah, so right here I printed out, oh, whoops, I don't know why this is there. But yeah, oh, right here, I printed out all the locations of them just to show you what it looks like. So I already, already ran the thing, but I'll run again just to show you some proof. It's going down. But yeah. So, right here, the first thing it does is it prints out all the locations of the barrels. And they're all right here. They're all right here. Look, they all have the extra functionality. They get destroyed after I shoot them. But yeah. So right here, these are the map coordinates of every single barrel of that type. See, I'm not including the broken barrels, which is the ID of 6. I'm just including the ID of 5. That's it. So that's what the get used cells by ID function does. It gives you an array of all the map coordinates of all the um, cells of that type. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I'll, I'll take off that print. And uh, yeah, I'll come back to that later. So I made a function which you don't really need to do. I just did it for simplicity's sake. Because I, I wanted to call this function twice. I made another function for the meaties one. Because I just wanted to make it. I just wanted to make no mistakes if I needed to write something. Again. So yeah I made a replace barrels function. And I keep track of the, all the positions. Of the tiles. And uh, after that. I am going to loop through each one. Of the map coordinate. Um, or, each one of these vector 2D's and that's the ray. What it will well, do is it'll just iterate through each one. So we got this, uh, remember we made this variable up here? It's preloaded with that path. So it's loading that scene into that variable. So right here, this is where we use it. So we uh, make a new barrel and then we make an instance of that scene. So we get an instance of that scene put into this variable. So we're basically doing the same thing we do over here, which is instance a child scene. So it's pretty sweet. Hell yeah. And we put that into the new barrel, and bam, we got a new instance. So, what's go what we're gonna do with that first? We gotta like uh, go. Th this is what the tile positions for. So we get the tile positions of all the map coordinates and put them into real coordinates. So there's a map to world function. So that's what the map to world function does. And we uh, just get go through that array, get each array index of the vector 2Ds, and then we just put it into this uh, tile position. See that, that that's what's happening down here. So we use a map to world function, gets one of these IDs, and puts it into one of these. Bam! So each one, each index of that um, of that array is going to be changed with this. So I'm just going to take this print off. So that when we test it, it won't print and slow it down. Okay. So after that, I'm, um, I use those coordinates, the real coordinates, and put it into the new barrel instance. It's right here. Watch. So, uh... Yeah, I made a special function for that. I'll go to the other code. And here's a set position. I just make a vector 2D, put this. The only reason I did it like this weird way was because I want a little bit of an offset on the Y axis. But yeah, there's probably a better way I could do that too, but fuck it, you know what I mean? Sometimes you just gotta like, just go on with it. Yeah, and that's a pretty simple function right there. So that was this whole thing, basically. I get the map coordinates, put in the real world coordinates from this uh, tile array, and then I put that into a position, and then I put that position and change the position of the new barrel instance. So yeah, that's how it works. That's what these, th these three lines of code do. So then we go to the set cell function, which is basically, it'll find, based on the coordinates you give it, 
it will find this coordinate, which is just like one of these numbers up here, and then what this y coordinate, and then clear it. That's what the negative one does. So if you use a set cell, give it the coordinates, and then put a negative one, it'll clear whatever is in that sp tile space. So right here, wait, I'll go back to the dungeon scene. So bam, right here. So right here, it would clear. So let's say if I put that barrel, if it will clear whatever is in the space and replace it with one of those instance ones. So it's pretty sweet. So yeah. So right here, uh, yeah, that's a set cell, negative one, bam. And then after that, it will instantly add that new barrel instance to the scene. So it'll have all that position. It'll have the position, the map to world, all that shit. It will be put into there. Bam. So that's what the replace function does. And yeah, that's pretty much, the rest of them are basically the same, except with the damage barrels, I just set them at half health, which I have code on the barrel, that if it's set less than half health, then it looks damaged. But yeah, and the meaties are going to have their own thing, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but right now I'm just putting placeholders in, just to, so I can have the same functionality of the barrels, where I can just put it in, instead of making a bunch of enemies right here, I take up graphical space. But yeah, I hope this helps. I think there's better ways I could do it. If you guys need any clarification, just post in the comments, ask some questions, you know, I'll respond. And if it's like, if there's enough of one question, I'll just make a new video just to clear some shit. Yeah. I almost forgot to run my game. So, uh, yeah, I suck with OBS, which is why I'm using. So, uh, yeah, I just didn't want to fuck up the rest of the recording. It's right here. I'll just show you guys what I did. Bam. We did all that code. And then, in the game, see how I put that barrel down right there? In the tile set? Boom, motherfucker! Yeah! Yeah! Boom! Boom! Yeah! Okay. Yeah, that's all I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> Just to show you the legitimacy of this video, because I, I did... This works. This method works. Might not be the best way to do it. If you guys know anything efficient, just put it in the comments. Anything more efficient. If you guys have any ideas. That'd be freaking sweet. And yeah, I might be posting more game updates in the future. So, uh, yeah. See ya.